Hi, everybody. Welcome to another hour of Verbling English classes. Uh, it's 2 p.m. Pacific time, and I'm going to be offering a class this hour on cooking vocabulary. So I have a Google Doc set up that will help us guide our discussion for the next hour. Uh, it has a lot of vocabulary, <laughs> a lot of verbs, a lot of words that you're going to uh, come across when you're talking about cooking, cooking in the kitchen, making stuff, baking, frying, grilling, all those words are words that we use when we're going to prepare food, whether it's uh, baked goods like cookies or pies or breads, or if we're going to cook something like meat, or chicken, or rice, or something like that. So I'm just introducing the class right now. People are coming in to the Google Hangout. I'm going to tell you how this works. So if you're coming to Verbling and you're on the live classes page, we have a class. We try to have a class every hour if there are teachers available. And so we're going to have this class for an hour. And there should be at the top of the screen a green join class button. If you see it, click on the join class button and then you will get into here. This is the right here. I'm pointing down there. The Google Hangout chat. And if you're in there, then you will get to participate in the class by speaking and asking questions and um, basically being here with us. If you don't want to join in the class, maybe your microphone doesn't work or you have a very slow connection to the internet, then you can just watch the class and you can participate by watching and also reading along with the Google Doc that I have that I'm going to give the link to in a minute. And also you can write things in the Verbling chat on the side of the window here. Um, that way we can answer your questions if you have questions. So I do still see that there's some people um, waiting. I see some returning students who've been on Verbling already today. Hi Diego, how are you doing? Hello. Hi there. Oh, and sorry. Hi. hi teacher. Where's Diego? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we may, maybe do we have a couple of Diegos? Okay. Yes, we have two right next to each other. <laughs> yes. Okay, Diego, Rafael, and the other Diego. All right. Well, when you introduce yourself, everybody's going to be able to tell us uh, where they're from, and I'll try to say the names correctly. And Wolf is here joining. Haven't had Wolf for a while. Hi, Wolf and Yosef. Welcome. So if you're watching, um, if there's still, let's see, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I might be full. There might be one more. If you see the green button and you want to come into the class, just click on the Join Class button, and you will be able to get into class today. We're going to be talking. Okay, Graciela is going to join us. If you're watching, um, you might wait around a little while to see if you get into the class. Sometimes it does happen that people have to leave early or they lose the connection for some reason. And so then if the green button appears again, then you can click on it and get into the class that way. Um, so in the meantime, it looks like we have people watching and we are full. So I'm going to start with the introductions. I'm going to start over here with Yosef. Are you there? Yes, hello. Hi. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself again? We have new people who haven't been in the class okay. before. I think I'm facing a problem. Okay, now can you hear me? Uh-huh. I can hear you well. Yeah, um, I'm Yosef from Yemen, and my native is Arabic. Okay, great. Um, I was laughing because Daniel wrote that my, my English is not bad. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wolf, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Lisa, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, glad to hear your voice. Yeah. <laughs> I think we are talking about, today is, uh, uh, about food, yeah? Yeah, we're gonna, I was going to try to do more about food and also make sure everybody understands words, especially the verbs that we use when we are doing various types of preparing food and cooking and baking. So I created yeah. a Google Doc. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll have a little discussion too. I'll ask some questions and people will Sounds be able to good talk. Because All right. I think your specialty because you have a coffee. 
Yes, I Am do. I right? uh, yeah. yeah. I have a cafe. It, yep. One, I one stone, one stone, two birds. <laughs> what? What? I said one stone, then two birds. Yeah, kill. Yeah, to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, right. we call liver. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mustafa, are you there? Yes. Hi there. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Why don't you tell us where you are? Uh, I am from Egypt. Egypt. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And Marley's here with us. Hi, Marley. How are you doing? Hello, Lisa. Hi. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> you must be hot. <laughs> yeah, it's really hot <laughs> here today. Okay. It's rainy but hot. Okay, good. And so tell everybody I where you're Marley. from. Yes, I'm from Brazil, mm -hmm. the hottest place in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right I'm now. Nine years old. Okay, wonderful. Welcome. And Luis, how are you doing today? Hello, fine. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Lisa. Uh, I'm from Spain. Here is at night and not so hot as Brazil. Yeah. Was it 11 o'clock there now? A little after yeah. 11? 11 o'clock. Okay. And what part of Spain are you in? I live in Alicante in the southwest coast of, of Spain. Okay. That's a pretty warm place. Usually. Okay, let's move over here to Graciela. Gil. Are you there? Am I, am I saying hi, your Lisa. name right? I, okay, hi Lisa. I changed I change, uh, my account because <laughs> I re, I'm not Lisa, uh, Graciela. You're not Graciela. I'm, I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roberto. Roberto. I'm okay, now you're going to confuse me. From Uruguay. Me. Okay, I'm from Uruguay, on. South America. Yeah, and you got your mate there? Sorry? Are you drinking mate? Yerba That's mate? right, great. <laughs> great. I see it, That's yeah. Mate, this is mate. All right. <laughs> the type of tea. Yes, uh, all right. Yes, we, we a, bitter, a bitter one. Uh huh. It's we bitter. sell that at our cafe. I have a cafe here in town <laughs> where I live. And we sell uh, yerba mate. Yes. Yerba mate, very yep. well. All right, yeah, and in Diego. South America. Yes, from South America. Mm, uh, Argentina, Uruguay, South of Brazil. Is it true so that yes. is it true that people drink more mate than co um, coffee? Yes, that's right. Uh, in oh, okay. the morning, in the evening, in the night, every time. Uh, you, yeah. Here in Uruguay, you can't smoke in in restaurant, but you can drink mate. <laughs> everybody <laughs> drink mate. I see. Nobody smoke, but everybody drinks mate. Oh, okay. Does it give you the same effect? I don't. I haven't really. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. It's only water. Okay. It's hot water. Hot water. <laughs> okay. Me. All right. Well, thanks, Diego. How about you tell us? Okay, how are teacher. You? Ah, I think you know I'm from Brazil, São Paulo. I know you are, <laughs> but they don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm participating in the class again. I think my performance in this class is not so good because I am not so good at cooking. And I, okay, well, well you'll, maybe you can learn something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I the other learn. Diego. We have Hello. Diego. Hello, my Carasquilla. name is Diego. Yes, Hi. I am from Colombia. Okay, wonderful. Yes. And Carl's joining us again from Brooklyn. By way of, hi, Lisa. By nice way of to China. see you again. <laughs> yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Carl, and I'm from China, but now I'm living in the United States. Nice to see you guys again. All right, great. So, I forgot what day it is. It's Saturday, so it's the weekend here. Are you uh, just hanging out on Verblink today while you're. Yeah, it's raining outside. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's probably pretty cold in Brooklyn this time of year, huh? Yeah. Has it snowed much? No, it's like 40-something degrees huh? right now. Yeah, it's bad. raining and it's getting warmer and warmer. And uh, were you in Brooklyn when Hurricane Sandy Yes, happened? that oh. was terrible, terrible. Wow, I bet. Yeah, it seemed yeah. really bad. But you're safe, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys... Um, some people are already on it because I posted it um, on the Verblink site. Here is the link <clears throat> to the Google Doc that I set up. And, um, Joseph, I'm going to 
mute your mic because I'm hearing an echo. But if you want to talk, oh, okay, just, sorry. just unmute yourself and then you can talk. Sorry. Okay, so today I thought we would just go over um, some vocabulary and we could have a conversation about different things. And so I created this Google Doc just to help us um, have an idea of where to go with all of this stuff. Because as you probably know, cooking is a very uh, big, big, big topic. We could go into all the different types of food. We could go into all the different types of uh, cooking utensils, things that you use when you're cooking, all the different types of appliances like the ovens and the mixers and uh, uh, Cuisinart mixers and things, cutters. There's lots of different things, but I wanted to uh, focus a little bit more on just the vocabulary that uses verbs. So the what are you actually doing in a kitchen? What are you doing to those eggs? Or what are you doing to make the dough? So um, we're going to focus on that, but if you have any questions about anything else, about how to say a, a certain type of food or um, something that you're not sure, you want to know how to say it in English, like uh, the bowls maybe or the different types of things, just ask me. And then also at the very bottom of the Google Doc, I gave you guys some links to some other places, some other websites, and a funny video on how to make pancakes. So I'm going to go to the screen share so that people who are watching this can follow along with us. You can also, if you're following along watching, you can open up the Google Doc. So pancakes is a typical breakfast food in America. And many times in the modern day, people just like to make things out of boxes. So you go to the store and you buy a, can a pancake mix, you call it, and it comes in a box and maybe you add an egg and some water and that's it. But I found um, this recipe online because part of cooking is not following uh, just the recipe on the back of a box but actually getting the real ingredients and making it yourself. So I thought this was kind of funny uh, that a person who commented on this recipe uh, made this comment and I'm going to ask um, hey Marley, would would you read that for us right there? That comment that this person made, where it says anybody, can you read that part right there? Yeah. Anybody can add water to a box of pancake mix, but you are better that than that. These pancakes are not too too thick. Mhm. Mm thick. Not too thin, but tender, light, buttery, and delicious. Okay, good. All right, so that's what, those are some words also that maybe you understand, maybe you don't, but when you're making a recipe, you want to use the real ingredients. So there's two parts to a recipe. The first part are the ingredients, and the second part is or the directions. So the second part is the directions. That's what you have to do with the ingredients. So... I'm going to ask somebody, how do we make pancakes? Diego, what are the ingredients that we need for pancakes? Give me uh, the first three ingredients. Diego, Rafael. You see them? Oh, see. Okay. The ingredients are one and a half cups of purpose flour. Yep. Three and a half teaspoons baking powder, powder. Yep. One teaspoon salt. One tablespoon white sugar, three okay. tablespoon butter, melted, melted. Mm -hmm. One egg, one and the one chair for cups milk, <laughs> cooking <laughs> <Yeah>. spray. <laughs> okay, good. So you got them all right except for that last one. That's we say one and a quarter. So one, one fourth. And a quarter. Yeah, you can say one fourth or one and a quarter. So part of reading the recipes will be the amounts of things that you need. And yes, <clears throat> as Daniel points out, um, he says Celsius. But in the United States, we have different measuring. Um, we use different measurements, and we also use uh, different temperature. Well, we we use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. So you probably know that. So you need to get familiar with that if you're going to be cooking according to an American recipe. But oftentimes on the internet, it will give you both things. But also um, in the U.S., we use 
teaspoons, tablespoons, and cups. In other places, you use the metric system, so you have milli milliliters and things like that. But uh, in the United States, we have uh, different measurements, so you got to become familiar with those. And then we have the directions. So how about, uh, Luis, do you want to read the first thing you're supposed to do? Okay. <clears throat> Sift together flour, baking powder, salt, and sugar in a large bowl. Right. Does everybody understand what it means to sift together? Well, how would you do that, Luis? Mix. Yeah. Mix. Pretty much. There is a there is a certain tool where you sift things where it makes it kind of like a, a lighter where it's, there's a, a a mesh thing and you pour the flour in over the mesh and then you tur uh, turn it and it makes it uh, grinds it up a little bit more. But you can just mix it. I would say mix it is fine. All right, we have Abdullah. You came and joined the class. Welcome. Just wanted to say hi. And Carl, can you um, read number two? What's the second thing we have to do after we mix all that stuff together in a large bowl? Okay. Uh, secondly, whisk in melted butter, egg, and milk until combined. Let, let batter rest for five minutes. Mm -hmm. So what would be another word for whisk? Do you understand the word whisk? Um, no idea. <laughs> it's like mix. It's like mix. Yeah, it's like um, stir, stir it in. Stir. So you can do, but specifically, whisk is to stir uh, the mixture with with a whisk. To stir. So if somebody looks up whisk, for example, if you want to know, this is the best way for you guys to do this kind of stuff for doing the English. So just type in your bar whisk. And then go to uh, Google Images, and then you'll be able to oh. see what a whisk is. So that's what a whisk looks like. Not whiskey, Daniel. <laughs> whiskey is alcohol. But uh, yeah, so you use that utensil, that tool. It's called a whisk. And then you beat together all of those ingredients. Okay? So that's a good way to figure that out. And on the last one, three, uh, Sophia, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Do you want to read the uh, the third part of the directions for us? Um, yes. Okay. Can you see it? I just heard the first um, word before. Can you can you read it for me? Uh huh. Pre preheat. Pre preheat a large skill over medium high heat. Spray with cool Mm -hmm. Pour butter into the uh, hot skillet about, oh, how, how I will read? A quarter cup? A, a quarter uh, of butter for each pan pancake. Cook for two to, two to three minutes until bubbles appear on the sides and center of each pa pancake. Flip and cook until golden about one minutes. Okay, good. Um, Sophia, your your microphone was cutting in and out, so I it was a little bit hard to hear you. So I don't I don't know if you want to uh, check your mic or maybe you have to speak into the mic closer. But I'm gonna have uh, Mustafa read that again for us. So since I think it was hard for some of us to hear with your microphone, Mustafa, can you read that part for us? Mustafa. Okay, I'm going to go to Diego. Okay, Mustafa, are you there? <laughs> no. Diego Carrasquilla, you want to read? Yes, sure. Okay. okay. Number preheat, three. Okay, preheat a large skillet over medium-high heat. Spray with cooking spray. Pour butter into the hot skillet, about one quarter cup of, wa of butter of each pancake. Cook for two tr to three minutes until bubbles appear on the sides in the center of each pancake. Flip and cook until golden, about one to two minutes. Okay, good. So what does it mean to preheat a large skillet? What do I mean when I say preheat? Preheat something? Preheat. Mm, make it... Uh, uh, prepare heating. Start, start with something? Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Okay, I think I heard somebody say, Marley said, heat something. Yes, so you're going to make the pan or the skillet hot before you put the, the mixture on Do something it. before, heat, before yeah. uh, heating. Right. So pre is a, a prepos, um, is a prefix. It means before. 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 Yeah. So it's like before heat. So you're heating it before you actually start to cook. So you're just getting it hot. So you're getting the pan hot before you put the batter on. And the batter is what we call the mixture. So you mixed all the flour, the eggs, everything in there. And now it's called batter. And then you pour it onto the hot skillet. That's the pan. Skillet is a pan. And then you cook it for a couple of minutes. And you flip it over with a spatula. You use a spatula to flip it. And then you cook it on the other side. And then you're done. Does everybody know what pancakes are? I'm going to show you guys what pancakes are. Those are pancakes. Does anybody do it? Does anybody eat pancakes? Diego, do you eat pancakes in Brazil? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I eat pancakes. Mustafa, you eat pancakes too? Yes. Yeah. Do you eat them with um, yeah, yeah. syrup or fruit, or what do you eat pancakes with? With fruit. Uh, okay. Strawberries. Okay, that's nice. Um, with strawberries. Cool. And what about you, Sophia? Do you ever eat pancakes? Yeah, yeah. usually. Sophia, um, you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself because you just joined us. Where? What country are you from? I'm from Turkey. Oh, okay. And in, in Turkey they make pancakes too? Yes, we have. <laughs> okay, so everybody <laughs> knows how to make pancakes. Do you do you um have them sweet? Are they sweet or savory? No, savor. Oh, okay. And are they thick or thin? Oh thin here. Are they more like uh, crepes, maybe like the French yes, crepes? Yes, look like look like crepes. We are uh -huh. eating with honey, uh -huh. uh, like banana, this kind of things. Oh, okay, okay, great. And uh, Carl, how about you? Have you had pancakes in in New York? Well, I guess I'm the only one here. Don't don't eat pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I have the chance to, but and um, I think I will have it sometimes uh -huh. in the future. Yes, yes. If you're in the United States, if you go out to breakfast, if you go to a breakfast restaurant, then that's a popular um, popular item on the menu is pancakes. Yeah, and I think I can see them anywhere. Uh, yeah. I can see them everywhere. Yeah. But I just don't don't get close to them and buy them. <laughs> well, do you like sweet things? Um, I don't, I, well, I guess I like it. Yeah. I don't hate them, and I don't um, like them very much, so. Yeah. Okay. That's I okay. think they are having it in McDonald's now. You think what? They are having it in McDonald's. They are uh, serving it. Oh, oh, in McDonald's? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yes, they probably do sell them in McDonald's. Ahmad, are you there? Yes, Ahmed? I'm here. Yes, yes. Hi. Do you have you ever had a pancakes? Yes, yes, I had before. Yes. Have you ever had them with maple syrup? That's a pretty what we usually eat them with is maple syrup. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I have it with uh, with cream, some cream. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. whipped cream? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yummy. All right. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's a basic, very simple recipe that I just found off the internet. I took it from uh, this website here. It's called allrecipes.com. I gave you the link to it at the bottom of the Google Doc. If, you're, if you want to try to make recipes, follow recipes in English, uh, this is a good site. You can have, they have videos. They have menus. They have all kinds of recipes. You can put in what kind of thing you're looking for, a, a desserts or chicken or all those types of uh, meals if you want to try to make a meal. And you can follow it in English. It's all in English, so it'll be great practice for anybody who's interested in, 
in cooking. All right, let's get back to our thing here because now we're going to get into. I just wanted to give you that as a an example of that those are the words that are used in a recipe. And of course, sometimes the ingredients, the things that you need, might be a lot more if you're making a bigger dish with lots of different types of things. And the directions might be a lot longer uh, and more complicated depending on uh, what you're making. All right, so now we're going to get into some verbs. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to ask people to read the word and the definition. And then I might ask you some questions using that word. Maybe I'll, I'll ask you uh, some different things so that you'll have a chance to speak. Because I want everybody to have some um, chance to speak, uh, maybe do some reading, and, and all different types of things in English today. All right, so these are the verbs used while cooking and baking. All right, Ahmad, how about you read the first one? What's that first word there? And what does it mean? Uh, bake. Mm -hmm. To cook in an oven. Right. So I put a picture here. For some of these, I put a picture. So to bake, where do I bake? Do I bake inside or on top? Inside. Right. Exactly. And what kinds of things do we bake usually? What types uh, of food? Bread. 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 Uh -huh. bread okay. And what else? Pastries. Pastries. Okay. Chicken. Turkey. Yep. Turkey. Cookie. Cookies. Yeah, good. Cake. Cakes, yep. Okay, good. So those are the types of things. Anytime you want to bake something, you're going to put it inside the oven. Okay? If you're doing something on top of the oven, right there, that's um, a different word. That's cooking on top, on the stove top. All right, the next one probably you guys are familiar with. Oh, what happened to my picture? Down there. All right. Oops, doesn't fit. Well, that looks this, good, though. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody knows what this is, probably. Barbecue. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Carl, why don't you tell us what it means to barbecue? Okay. Barbecue to cook on a grill over a, uh, what was that? Charcoal. Charcoal, Charcoal or uh -huh. seasoned wood fire, usually with a tomato-based sauce. Customer, so, so. Customary outside. Yeah. It doesn't have to be with a tomato sauce, but that's sometimes. So this is is a picture. That's what barbecuing is. In the United States, barbecuing is mostly popular in the summertime. And we most and a lot of people barbecue all types of things. Meats, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, vegetables, uh, things like that. Carl, um, in China, do people barbecue? Yes, a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what kinds of things are popular to barbecue in China? In China, well, we have those um, chicken wings, chicken mm -hmm. leg like uh, drumsticks, and mm -hmm. sometimes we have those. Uh, uh, how do you say that? Like, like meatball, something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Meatballs? All kind of meatballs, and uh, uh, what's that? Corn? You know, corn. Corn on the cob. Um, I don't know. I don't nope. know. We, we, we barbecue a whole corn. Yeah, that's called corn on the cob. Watch. Okay. I'll get you the picture. <laughs> like that? Yeah. The whole cob. Yeah, that's called a cob right there, that whole piece yeah. of corn. Yeah. And at the end of that event, event uh, uh -huh. like we, we don't want to cook for, for eating anymore, we will basically throw anything in the fire. And that, <laughs> and that just for fun. Yeah, yeah, great, cool. Cousin, you're here. Are you gonna talk? Every does everybody know cousin? Cousin is a popular person who, who likes to come and, and hang out but not talk. Okay, so I gotta go. All right, I'm kicking out cousin. So if anybody wants to join, there's gonna be a join class button. And the only reason why is because I want to give people a chance to join in who want to speak and can have a microphone that works. Cousin, you can hang out in the uh, verbal and chat, okay? All right, the next one is beat. Diego, how about you read it for us what it means to beat? Diego Carrasquilla. Okay, beat. Combine, 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 combine vigorously uh -huh. yep. with the intent of to force air into the mixture. Right. So this is a picture right there of your that person's getting ready to beat 
something. <laughs> of course, many of these verbs can be used in other ways too, not just for cooking, like if you're going to beat your brother up or something like that. <laughs> but um, this one is beating, so you're just going to start uh, mixing it, but really fast. So vigorously means fast and with like a lot of uh, a lot of power. And so sometimes uh, when you're beating something, you might use a bigger mixer, like an electronic mixer, instead of just your hand. So if the recipe calls for beating, that's what it means, beating the ingredients together. Okay, this next one is blanching. Diego, Rafael, can you read blanch? Okay, blanch. Cook or back quickly into very hot water to remove external material. Yeah, so a lot of times, I found this picture here, a lot of times uh, when you're making a recipe, you want to get the skin of the tomato off. And so one way that you can do that is to blanch. So you get the water really hot, and then you dump the tomatoes in, and you just leave them in there just for a little bit, and then you take them out, and then you can get the skins off really easily that way. Has anybody ever tried blanching tomatoes before? With a knife? Uh, no. Not with a hot water. no, not with a knife. Blanching is putting them in hot water. This picture right here that you see, that's yeah, what you do. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I tried to take the skin with a knife, and it oh, takes yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. yeah, this is an easier way, especially if you have a lot of tomatoes that you need to um, peel or take the skin off of them at one time. It uh, works a lot better that way. So... Um, all right, so blanch. If the if the recipe calls for blanching, that's what you gotta do. Okay, blend. What is the word blend? Some of these kind of are very similar, but um, Dylan, are you there? Blend. Dylan just joined us. And blend people who can see. Yeah, I don't know. Dylan's not there. Okay, Marley, how about you? Blend. What does it mean to blend? Bl Marley. As I'm back. Okay, can you read what it means to blend? Yes, blend is mixed together gently until the consistency is the same throughout. Throughout, yeah. Throughout. Good. So blending is kind of like beating, but not so much power. So you just want to do it gently. Not a lot of power. You might probably would blend together some eggs uh, with some, um, maybe some with some milk you blend it together if you want to make scrambled eggs or something and the consistency is is what it means is how thick it is or how thin it is so you don't want to have like lumps and things there you want the consistency to be good okay we have a few people that are, that are new here but I'm gonna go on to uh, Mustafa are you there Mustafa? yes I am here alright why don't you read both of those for us because boil is not uh, too long there what does it mean to boil Cook in hot water. Yeah, so if usually we if we want to make some like uh, uh, hard boiled eggs, you put them in hot uh, water eggs, and you get uh, it to potatoes, boil. Uh, and potatoes, uh, right? Yeah, boil yeah. some potatoes. Yeah, so I got a picture there of boiling water. So it's hot, hot water. And what does it mean to braise? Braise. Mm -hmm. uh, to first uh, cook uh, food at high heat and then finish in a convert boot with uh, liquid yeah so then you so what you do this a lot of times you do this if you're going to cook a stew so if you're going to cook like a beef stew first you braise the meat which means you put it on the pan really high heat and you just cook it on each side of the meat a little bit and then you put the meat in a pot with some liquid and you cover it and you let it um, sit there for a long time and cook and so the braising part is the getting it really hot on either side first. Okay? All right, what does it mean to bread things? Let's see. Well, who's next here? I think we had a new student in here. Let's see. Peter, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hi, Hi Peter. How about you tell us what it means to bread something? To dip or roll food in a liquid and then uh, breadcrumbs until covered. Yeah, so I, gave a, I found a picture there. That's breaded um, chicken. So, where, uh, Peter, what country are you from? Peter? I'm from Germany. Oh, okay. So, in Germany, what type... I'm from Germany. What type of food is breaded in Germany? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
I can hear you, Peter. Uh, schnitzel. Uh -huh. <laughs> schnitzel. <laughs> yeah, schnitzel. <laughs> Which is what kind of meat? But I don't eat schnitzel. I'm a yeah. vegetarian. Okay. So I, I have to, to uh, breadcrumb my tofu. Your tofu, yeah. <laughs> Breaded tofu for the vegetarians. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because uh, otherwise the yeah, schnitzel okay. is, um, that's like a veal, is that right? Breaded veal? I think originally it's actually veal, but nowadays uh, they uh, very often use pork. Pork, oh, okay. Yes. Um, uh, Diego, in Brazil, do you have breaded foods very much? Yes, we have it. What? Like what? Uh, um... Chicken. Breaded chicken? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's see, Yosef, do you ever eat breaded foods? Like breaded chicken or breaded pork? Yosef? Mm, uh, we don't eat pork, but uh, chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pork. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, breaded chicken. Yeah, that's probably one of the more common meats is uh, breaded Okay, we're going to brew something. What does it mean to brew? This is popular when you're talking about beer. Carl, you want to read that for us? Brew. Sure. Brew, verb used to describe the process of making a portable, portable flavor mixture. Tea, <laughs> beer. Tea or beer. Yeah, so if you're talking about the brew, it's just mixing stuff together and letting it sit and brew. So if you're letting something sit, and that's what you do when you have tea leaves, and then you put the water over it, and you let it steep, is another word, or brew. And broil. Sometimes we would do broil if we want to like melt something really fast, like cheese on top of bread. Broil means to cook with the heat source above the food. So if you put, if you put it inside the oven, and you turn on the broil, that means it's going to cook just on the top and there's going to be a lot of heat coming down on the top and we like to broil if we want to um, melt something like cheese. I like to melt uh, cheese on bread. And if you want to brown something, uh, Ahmed, what does it mean to brown? Ahmad? <clears throat> to brown? Yeah. Mm. That's... Uh, maybe toast? Yeah. Well, here's the definition right there. Cook only until there is a light brown color. So, yeah, you could do toast. A lot of times you brown, uh, for example, onions. You cook them until they're brown. They get really sweet that way. Sometimes you brown meat. Um, all right, here we go. Chopping. Who likes to chop vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I have all guys in this class. Do any of you guys cook? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I can. Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Carl, do you like to chop vegetables? Yeah, if I cook, I, I will do that every time. Yeah, yeah. When so you, you're, yeah, when you when you try to make some Chinese food, when when we try to eat some vegetable, we have to chop them first. Yes, yes. And so here is a picture. That's what chopping looks like. And you can do chopping even smaller than that, or you can make it big chunks. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on what the recipe calls for. But yeah, um, it seems like there are certain types of food, certain cuisines that use a lot of chopped things. And I think uh, Chinese food definitely uses a lot of chopped vegetables and chopped meat. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. Like stir fry and stuff. and. Wow, a lot of Chinese food, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all good. Yeah, I like Chinese food. It's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's another one called combine. So sometimes they'll tell you, they'll give you the directions, and it says to combine all the ingredients in a large bowl. So, um, Mustafa, what would it mean to combine? Combine, combine makes together. Usually used yeah. with dry integrated. Ingredients. Uh-huh. Yeah, so here's a picture. It looks like they put in some sugar and they put in some salt probably and it looks like maybe some brown sugar there, flour maybe. So all of the dry ingredients in the recipe, it'll tell you combine all of those and then you'll add the, the wet ingredients probably later. So uh, the next one, cube or dice, is basically the kind of the same thing as chop. It's just that you're going to make them 
um, into like this right here, the squares kind of thing. So that looks like a yam or something uh, up there. Lisa? Yes? Uh, what is uh, the difference between combine and blend together? Is uh, there really a difference? Yes. So when you combine something, it means you're just putting it in the um, pot or the bowl, sorry, together. You're not doing really anything with it yet. You're just kind of putting it there not like that. Not mixing yet. Yeah, you're not yet mixing it. Uh -oh, you're just okay. putting mm -hmm. it together. And then once you blend something, that would be more with wet ingredients. If you're going to blend okay. in like the eggs, you know, the wet mm -hmm. milk. Okay. Yeah. A lot of these are kind of very similar in, I mean, I'm sure there's um, very technical um, cooking techniques, like if you went to cooking school, <laughs> but for following just a regular recipe, it might say blend and you might be doing mixing. They're kind of similar words, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then cutting in means to cut in, mix together gently with the edge of the mixing tool. So sometimes you cut things and you put it in there a little bit at a time. Here's mm -hmm. a picture of deep frying. Basically, you're dipping it in the oil and you're covering the food. So what is, what's a popular American food that is deep fried? Who can tell me? Popular Donut. American food. What? Donuts. Oh, yeah, Sorry. that's I was thinking of something else. Fries. But donuts. Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Fries. Fries. Yeah, French fries. Yeah, French fries are pretty popular uh, for... Americans to eat, and that's something that's deep fried. Of course, um, some people might um, know that in the South they have uh, different types of cuisines in different parts of the uh, United States, and in the South they do a lot more deep frying. They might deep fry breaded chicken or potatoes or all kinds of uh, different things. Um, let's see, Ahmad, yeah. is, is deep frying um, something that you ever do? Mm. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Uh, but I don't. Um. Uh, um okay. Uh, honestly, I don't like uh, frying. <laughs> I don't like to yeah. fry. <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm afraid a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But a lot of. I like. I like to grill. <laughs> okay, you prefer yeah. to grill. Okay, yeah. good. What about you, Marley? Do you like a uh, deep fried food? Yes, I do. <laughs> like what? Uh, always I. Always as I can, I go to the McDonald's. Oh and yeah, I like you like McDonald's like. fries. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Diego? Do you like uh, fried food? No, teacher, I didn't like it. <laughs> okay. I prefer natural foods. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um, Peter. How about you, Lisa? Ah, uh, I, I like sometimes fried foods, but I don't eat a lot of them. But I like uh, I like uh french fries sometimes and also what's kind of popular sometimes is to make uh, sweet potato fries and yeah. those, that's another type of fry but with with a different type of uh, like a yam or sweet potato it's yummy kind of sweet uh -huh. and, yeah. and would you also uh, uh, bread uh, crumb them first or would you fry them straight away just like just, that yeah just cut them and fry them not bread them uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah, I would say that deep frying is not very popular these days. In some restaurants it still is, but in your house when you're cooking at home, it's not very um, popular these days. People don't want to cook with so much oil, and it, it, it's really hot, and it can be very messy in the kitchen. But certainly if you go out to a restaurant, you can get deep fried foods. Of course, there's all kinds of crazy foods in the United States too, so there's sometimes like deep fried Twinkies and and stuff like that, <laughs> like kind of uh, weird stuff that they just throw into the oil and they deep fry it, like if you go to a fair or something like that. You know. So some people really like it, but other people don't. All right, so Very we got popular in the uh, United, uh, in United Kingdom, fish oh, and chips. Fish you and can chip, actually yeah. swim in those deep fries. They are so <laughs> big. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, that is true. I do like uh, to have fish and chips sometimes. We have them fish here. Sometimes we have breaded uh, halibut, for example, is really yummy, or breaded uh, cod. So if you're making fish and chips, then you do bread the fish first, and then you deep fry it. <clears throat> and sometimes I have that at the restaurant. I don't make it at home, but at the restaurant, I, I will eat that. It's pretty yummy. 
Okay, uh, fold in is to mix together gently with the flat of your, okay, I read that one already, form. So sometimes when you're baking, especially, you use things called forms, and these are usually for types of cakes and things and pastries. It's just the type of, um, uh, so it gives it some kind of form, so you, it's a mold. You pour the batter of the cake into the mold, and then it comes out a certain shape. So that's what you use there. Fry, everybody knows that. We just talked about it. Grating. In America, we use a lot of cheese. We put a lot of cheese on everything. And where's my picture? Oh, here it is. So here's a picture of grating cheese. So a lot of times, uh, it's actually a Mexican thing, but uh, are people do people know what quesadillas are? Those are very popular, uh, especially like in the West Coast, where you have a tortilla which is a, a Mexican, like a, looks like a pancake, but it's very thin. It's like a, made with corn or wheat. And then you put cheese, grated cheese on it, and melt it. And that makes a quesadilla. And that's really yummy. I'm wondering, um, Peter, do you, as a vegetarian, do you, all, do you eat cheese? Uh, yes, I still eat uh, cheese and also eggs. I'm not uh -huh. a vegan. Okay. <laughs> and, um... Do you you do you grate cheese very often? Put on stuff. Uh, I actually grate cheese because I used to live in the UK for a couple of uh, uh, years. Uh, but uh, the Germans don't usually grate uh, their cheese. Uh, usually, they slice everything. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Slicing is definitely different. This is grating. It makes it into those little um, little pieces like that, so it's easier to melt. And cheese. let me tell you, to slice cheddar cheese, mature ah. cheddar cheese, is very hard to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to have the right tools. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, grating. So, yeah, you'll, if you go to the United States and you go to the store, a lot of times you will see, um, nowadays they already have grated cheese for you. So, I was going to see if I, if you go to the store, you can buy it in bags. Um already made. So if you, you see this right here, you go to the store and they've already grated all this cheese for you so you don't even have to do it at home anymore. <laughs> so some people use that if they're really in a hurry, I guess. And they don't have time to grate their own cheese. Alright, the next uh, word is knead. And this is what you do when you're making uh, bread. You work the dough with your hands and keep folding it in. And I have a picture of that, but it's down below. Let's see here. So where to go? This one right here. That's what you do when you're kneading, kneading bread. Has anybody ever made bread by hand? Yes, Marley, I tried have you ever once. tried? Who did? I oh, tried. Oh. oh yeah. How did it turn out? No, I didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bread. Bread can be. Um, pretty hard to to get it right. It can be hard. Um, oh yes, so Diego is watching, or uh, which which Diego is that? Diego, is that you? Or a new, different Diego? That's you, okay. You can ask me <laughs> too. <laughs> so it's a silent K. Okay, so there's lots of, some words, not lots, but some words in English that have the silent K, like knee, and night and no and need. So just one of those words. K N and you don't say the K. Okay? So if you're kneading the dough, it means you're smashing it and you're moving it around so that it gets to the right um, consistency. Alright, marinade. This is something that we do a lot with meat. We put it into like a, a sauce called a marinate. You know? So we mar we marinate it or we marinate it. Either one is, is good. I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker because we have some more. Mince is to chop into small pieces, smaller than cubes. So I think, Carl, actually the correct term would be to mince. When you're chopping things for Chinese food, you're probably mincing a lot of it. So don't you get it pretty small? No, not pretty <laughs> small. Just chop it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe like some onions and things like that. Do you try to get those small? Yeah, um, onions. We will, I will. I will mince it, but vegetables no. 
Okay. Right. So like just more. Yeah, like green peppers or like green beans or something. You just chop them up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's a picture. Uh, I found it looked pretty like they were mincing. Whoops. Right up there. And you try to get it really small. Sometimes that's like it looks like that they're gonna make a meatloaf there in that picture. They have the meat there, and they also have the carrots and pep uh, celery and onions and things. That's how you make a meatloaf. So meatloaf's a pretty popular dish also in the United States. You guys, not for vegetarians though. <laughs> I think you can make a, meat, a vegetarian meatloaf though. Forget how. I was a vegetarian before, but not anymore. So pan frying is, is frying, but it's just within a little bit of oil. So a lot of times people pan fry it or saute it similar. It's just not very much oil, so it's not like deep frying it. Okay? To pair is to peel something, like to peel it. So you might peel off the, the skin of an apple. Puree is really common. So right there is a picture, looks like pureed potatoes. But you also puree things like soups. If you make like a vegetable soup, you want to puree um, and roast. All right, roast is cooking in a covered pot either on the stove or in the oven. So you can do either one. And here's sauteing. Ahmad, do you saute your vegetables? Um, what does saute mean? Right here. Okay. Cook in a small amount of oil until browned. So, for uh, example, these onions, they're being sautéed right now. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, the time I, uh, I make pasta. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I need to so, sauté. Yeah, so a popular thing to sauté is, is usually uh, vegetables. You can sauté onions. You can sauté peppers. Um, things like that. And then Peter. I start starving. Oh, are you hungry now? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I should have told you. Yeah, as well. I just ate. I just ate, so I'm not hungry. <laughs> I had well, lunch before My class. mom is cooking. I'm so happy. Your uh, mom's cooking? Yeah. Yeah, oh. lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carl, your mom lives with you in Brooklyn? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I thought you were there on your own or something at college. No. Okay. Our whole family come here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Lisa. Yes, Peter. What is uh, the difference between saute, uh, saute, and uh, stir fry? Because stir fry is also uh, uh, done in uh, in a little oil. Mhm. Mm yes. Um. Usually, the difference in, in the sautéing is um, in stir fry. Stir fry. If you really want to do it right, you get a stir a stir fry pan. And so it's like a big, deep, um, let me see if I can find a picture for you guys. The stir-fry pan is a deeper, you see how it's more like a bowl? Mm -hmm. And it's deep. And so you put just a little tiny bit of oil in there and you get it pretty hot. And then you move it all around in there. So it just is kind of cooking the vegetables, but not very much. Sautéing is more, um, you probably put a little bit more oil in and it's a flat pan. You see, and it cooks more in the oil a little bit. Has it got anything to do with the temperature? Is uh, for yes. sautéing is it lower? Yes. Because stir fry, I know you should usually uh, use a very high heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stir frying. Um, yeah, stir frying um, is really fast. Well, Carl probably can tell you more. What's stir frying? What's it like? Because he said they use a wok, and that's what uh, Chinese people use is a wok. And so, like, this picture right here shows you, like, you might put a bunch of stuff in there on a high heat and kind of just flip it even. Yeah. That yeah. looks very cool. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. cool. I yeah. can't do that. It requires a lot of, you know, strength uh, uh -huh. on, your, on your arm. Right. To flip those food in a wok. Yeah. Because a wok can be pretty big, too. And you can put yeah, a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, it's pretty big. And it's yeah. heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the main difference there. Um, let's see. To scald something is to pour hot water over it or dip it in the hot water. S sear to drop food, usually meat, in a very hot pan to seal in juices. Um, do people eat many fish? Okay, let's see. Diego, you probably eat fish in Brazil or Marley. Do you guys eat fish? Yeah. Yeah? 
So when you um, cook something like tuna, like a slice of tuna or even salmon or something, a lot of times we just sear it. That means we put it on the, the pan really hot and we just cook it a little bit on one side and then cook it another, on the other side. Do you guys do that in Brazil? We sear yes, not often. Fish? No? No. No. How do you cook your fish? Yeah. Marley? <laughs> in the fridge. Fry? Yeah. Oh, okay. So. What? Are you going to tell me something else? Diego? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, we put the fish in the fried and uh, okay. put the la in other side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's searing. Just really, if you do something really quickly. Um, separating, that just means the egg. Sometimes when you're cooking different recipes, you only want to use the egg yolks. So if you only want to use the egg yolks or only want to use the egg whites, then you would uh, separate those. So that's what they would tell you to do in the recipe. Simmer. If it says uh, cook the rice and then simmer, that means to cook it on a very low heat. It's just barely uh, cooking it. And steeping, that's what I said up before, is about brewing, for example, with tea. Stews are pretty popular. We have beef stew and we have chicken stew, different types of stews. That's just making a soup or a stew, and you cook it for a long time on the, um, on the stove. And sometimes you uh, thicken it up with a little bit of flour. Toast is lightly brown, and tossed is to make a salad. I wrote, put it there. You toss those vegetables together. And I'm almost done here. Whip is to beat rapidly. So if you're, that's for like butter or cream. You want to make some whipped cream. Mm -hmm. And then the last one. So I was going to ask you guys some here. What's this picture at the top? What are they doing there, do you think? Who can tell me what they think they're doing? with these ingredients here. Blending. Mm -hmm. Eggs, eggs. Yeah, what they else? Are making cake. Yeah, it looks like something. So I would say that they're blending or mixing uh, the ingredients together. All right, what about the next one here? What are they doing there? Barbecue. Yeah, barbecuing. Does, do those foods look familiar to people? What we got there? Chick a whole chicken. Sausages. <laughs> Sausages or hot dogs, maybe. Steak. Yeah. And this is something, uh, kebab. You guys know what kebabs are, probably? Ahmad? Yeah, I know kebab. Yeah, yeah you know, know kebab. kebab. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's Turkish, I think. Turkish food? Uh huh. Turkish yeah, I think, it, I think it's, I don't know if Turkish or is it Middle? Is it in other Middle Eastern countries? Yeah, kebab? Middle East as well. Yeah. Egypt. In Egypt, Egypt yeah. Kebab. Okay. I think barbecue from Brazil is the better in the world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll okay. I agree with Diego. Okay, you, you, need to you need to prove it. You, right. you have to invite us. <laughs> yeah, you have to invite some people to have, to have to give you their opinion about it. All right, that's uh, what, what do you think that is there? Uh, bread, uh, chicken. Fry. Yep, both of those, bread right. Chicken. Yep, breaded chicken, which is being uh, deep fried. So it's being deep fried, and that's a popular dish in the south of, of the United States, deep fried chicken. This is a popular breakfast um, item in the United States. Does I anybody... have that tomorrow morning. You're going to have that tomorrow morning? I breakfast. I always <laughs> have English breakfast on Sunday mornings. Oh, okay. What do you have for breakfast? Well, scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. Do you have and tomatoes? Toast and baked beans on toast. Baked beans, okay. Toast. Yep. Very right. British. Don't the British also have like uh, baked or fried tomatoes or something like that? Uh, yeah, well, sometimes I also do fried tomatoes, but they are currently so expensive in Germany, so oh, I huh? didn't buy any today. Yeah, okay. And this, we have a couple more here, and then we're going to, our time is running out. What is this person doing with the bread? Slice. Uh huh. You could say she is slicing bread or cutting slices. Say that. That's good. And what about this person? What are they doing to the onion? Chop. Chop. I would say slice in that. The slice is a little bit different. It makes the big.
um, big pieces like that, slice uh, the onion. If you wanted to chop the onion, then you would uh, put the knife and you would cut it up some more. So right there is just slicing, but then if you wanted to chop, you would take your knife and, and make some more cuts, and that would be chopping. Yeah. Okay? okay. All right. Well, I think I'm going to let you guys go because if you want to go to the next class, it's time to go. Here's somebody slicing up some vegetables and frosting some cookies. So I'm going to leave this up here. You guys, go check out this pancake video. It's pretty cool. I put it on here. You can check it out on uh, YouTube. Check out the Food Network. They have lots of cooking classes and things you can watch online that's really fun. And it's all in English because they're Americans. So it's a uh, good practice for your English. And I want to thank everybody for coming to class today. Maybe you'll go get inspired to do some cooking today or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you can come back and tell me what you cooked or you baked. Okay? Okay. All okay. right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye.